Hey guys, Gotham Geek Girl here, coming to you live from New York Comic Con 2019. We have so much to come from DC Comics. Upcoming interview with creative director of DC Collectibles, Jim Fletcher. Be sure to find me on GothamGeekGirl.com, GeekHQ.com, and Gotham Geek Girl on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Facebook. See you later. Gotham Geek Girl here with Jim Fletcher from DC Collectibles. Hooray! Hi, everybody. We just had an amazing panel. Thanks. Um, so you just got back into New York, right? Yeah, back from back to my hometown. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, it's always great to be back in New York. The show's great. I mean, you know, considering how recent it is compared to San Diego. Oh the yeah. The size of this event is fantastic. Crazy. And San Diego felt like yesterday. I. Like, it <laughs> I, went too I, fast. So true. It went too fast. Yeah, but, but it's, um, it's always good to come back here and see all of everybody. Um, your offices used to be here and everything. So, um, a little homesick sometimes. So, good it's to good be to home. be back. Um, so, fashionable as always. Same to you. <laughs> what I'm wearing. Look at this. Of course, it's amazing. DC Collectibles is my favorite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, tell me. So, how did you first get started in product development in the toy biz and why? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, so, basically, I wanted to be a comic book illustrator. And I actually tried out, I got a, a tryout gig at Marvel, and I started drawing the pages, and then I realized I don't, I don't want to do this, because I didn't want to draw Cars, or Spider-Man kissing Gwen, or Peter Parker kissing Gwen Stacy in the elevator, or J. Jonah Jameson pounding, I'm like, I don't want to draw this stuff, like, I want to draw, like, crazy monsters or whatever, so they basically said, okay, you don't want to draw this, you should go over to this department, I started drawing Conan, pinups and stuff. And ever since I was a kid, I wanted to draw comic books. So it was weird getting to that space where you're like, oh, man, like, I can't believe I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do this. It's a really hard job. Oh, yeah. So, of course, I went into a, an even harder job of toy, <laughs> toy development. Right? But I was, I'm a big collector. I was collecting stuff. I think somebody asked on the panel, but I've been collecting stuff of when I was really young. I'm buying Transformers and Robotech stuff. And, all, and I kept buying more and more stuff. And one of my friends who actually helped get me this job was like, why don't you just make this stuff? Like you keep buying everything, just like, like make it. So I had my own freelance uh, client base and I started changing all my clients to more that kind of work, toy development work. So since I've always been a toy collector, I really just kind of shoved my way into the, to a job in this space. So it was, it's a, that's a very short version. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's amazing, do what you love. Yeah, that's, that's what I always tell people when I'm talking to kids or anything else when I'm talking about this stuff, I'm like, it's so true, because for me, it actually worked out great. I mean, driving stuff like this from inside the company is, is amazing. Um, and how did you go about finding artists um, for figures? What's your process? So um, since we're DC collectibles, most of our stuff is DC art related. So it's, you know, it's Jim Lee or it's Greg Capullo for most of the time because that's who people are reading the, most of their comics on. So those are the easy ones for us to find. But when we're doing stuff like Artist Alley, we wanted to move outside of the, um, that's the traditional comic book you know, veins. So we started literally walking around Artist Alley. You're know, like, that guy's cool, and that girl's cool, and I, you know, that night they do really nice artwork. And we would just pull stuff out that we liked, get it sculpted, and present it at like a toy fair. And you don't, never know how that's going to go. But it's, I mean, some of our people we use have bigger names than other ones, like Joe Ledbetter is pretty well known in that industry or you know james groman a lot of people know them but not everybody in there is somebody like oh it's blah 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 i'm gonna go invest in this so that's when it gets trickier when it's not like some of the like, like a gym or yeah i mean the jim lee stuff is it's beautiful looking we always know we can you know move it and he's mm -hmm. you know a big part of dc the frank miller batman back there i mean i'm expecting that to, that's brand new on the show floor so we expect stuff like that to do really well but that, but funny, that's a, that's an interesting part of the process because that's when you get into a lot of design team arguments. Ah. I like this guy, but I like that guy. But but luckily, I'm in charge of it, so I get to like, pick. I'll choose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how do you incorporate your fashion and art background into your decision making? Oh, that's good. That's the first time anyone ever asked me that question, actually. Too, so. Oh, did you? <laughs> okay, that's why I should have guessed. Um, I've always been super interested in costume design. I have a, most of my books of my reference library are all historical costume design books or some of the Japanese video game artists. Like, they're, it's all over the place for what that is. When we were doing a line called, um, like for Bombshells is a good example. We went out, when we just pitched that line, 
Uh, me and my art director, Brian Walters, went out and we basically bought a ton of books from like fashions of the 40s or whatever. And we did a lot of research. We didn't just kind of make it up on the fly. We wanted to be, we didn't want it to be from the 40s, but inspired by that whole, you know, that whole look. And when we did the Amy Kami line before that, I basically just bought a ton of, I was buying like really high end fashion magazines and just pulling out crazy styles that I thought could, if you take a piece of them, you can translate it into one of our characters. The trick's making the core of the character still be the same and then expanding us. You can't make it so unrecognizable that you're like, well, who is that? Yeah, like so, it's still Batwoman. Or yeah, still right. So, and the, the funny thing is finding that balance is interesting. Because if I could do, just do whatever I wanted fashion-wise, you'd be like, who, who, is, who is this? <laughs> but I mean, even like the James Groman stuff back here, which is pushing the envelope for just out there stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, there's so many Easter eggs on why that's still Batman. Because on his belt, you've got like there's a Bane mask and a bunch of Riddler's hats. So obviously, he's still looped into that. So it's finding those moments to bring the fashion in when I can to move the designs forward. And mostly when we're doing our own stuff like the bombshells or stuff like that. That's when you really get to take that background and be like, I can apply this here. That, that's, those are my favorite projects, actually. And what are some challenges that you faced as a creative director? <laughs> hmm, that's a very, <laughs> that's a nice long list. Um, most, you know, the most challenging part really of the job is not getting to make everything you want. That is always, I mean, that's a big challenge for almost anybody, not just in the creative industry. I mean, you're know, getting what you want, right? That's a big challenge for everybody. But when stuff comes up and, uh, or it gets canceled, like we'll pitch out a line, like the um, uh, Engines of Chaos. We had that out at West Toy Fair. And we put it out there, put it into previews, and it just didn't move enough units. So for now, we just put it on hold. That doesn't mean we threw it in the garbage. We just like put it down. Mm -hmm save it for later or like the lucha line that we had out there those were I thought were, that's that's also on hold and being redeveloped so it's sometimes it's just about timing though um because bombshells honestly was pitched when we were still in new york twice and we couldn't get it approved and then we moved out here and then like seven years later it comes out oh, wow. so we hold on to everything all the old prototypes because time. might be disappointed right then but it might just because of timing so that's those are the, the biggest challenge for me is that like not getting every single every single thing done that I want when I want mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to do it, um, and that's just being patient and you know working in the toy industry for as long as I have, I've had a lot of ideas just get tanked or disappear and you think they're never going to show up again. Then someone's like, hey, what about blah blah blah? Because the wheels come back around. Later, so you can yeah, use it. so that's that's probably the biggest challenge. The biggest influence on you outside of comics, and how has that affected you? Outside of comics, oh, Whew. that's good. I listen to and still write a lot of music, so that's probably my other big influence. Um, you know, I, I, no, that's tough. Well, I'm in New York right now, so I keep wanting to say the Ramones because I <laughs> saw them a bunch of times. Um, but. Uh, there's a lot of musicians uh, that I think were great that I look up. I'm a big, big Zeppelin fan. Listening to them for years. I'm all over the place, musical genre-wise. So, uh, wow. I mean, my family really is a big inspiration to me. So, so there's that. Um, they're always there. I run a lot of stuff past them, and they've been a real backbone for me, uh, even supporting everything that I do. Which is a crazy career. Yeah. <laughs> it's a crazy career, but my my wife and kids have been fantastic. So I'd say they're pretty big influences for me. And what do you do to recharge your creative um, batteries? Like what element of your work gives you the most satisfaction? You know, honestly, what's funny is these shows are a big boost for, for me. Even if people don't like every single thing in there, I don't mind talking about it because I can at least hear what they don't like. And maybe that's a good idea. Like even that woman, that the, uh, somebody at the panel today said, hey, how about Batwoman in that? I'm like, yeah, that's, that's great. That wasn't on a list, so that's a really good idea. I mean, the energy in this place for everything that's happening is a big recharge for me. And then like, and then writing music in my spare time, that's, that's where I go to just... Zone out. Yeah, for a little <laughs> while, yeah. But I always carry a sketch pad around, even on the train, on the plane, I'm doodling or whatever. So, Holy um, ball and chain! <laughs> replacement parts! I like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Play kit later that's, and, uh, that's, I got a glue gun in my backpack. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> of course. 
so um, yeah, that's this. These these kind of things are big reach. I just see how many people get excited about it. I mean, it's great. Nice. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Oh wow! <laughs> best piece of advice. I think of my, in, in what I'm doing now, I had this guy, uh, Peter Pook, that was my boss when we were working on Dragon Ball Z up in Canada. And he was just like, just don't freak out about stuff. Because everything in the toy industry, it's always late. There's a problem in China. You know, there's always something happening because there's so many parts to the project. You got to get the illustrator on board and the sculptor and then it goes into production. And we our, our department supervises all that until the end. So there's any number of times you could just be like, Oh my God, what are we going to do? But that's probably the best bit of advice because he had been in the industry longer than me. He's like, listen to me. I've seen everything. It's either going to work out or it isn't, but don't just don't run around friend. panicking about <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's pretty good advice. That served me well in this, this particular job, that's for sure. Great. And if you could have a superpower, what would it be in ah. mind? Ah, superpower. Well, if I have a superpower of mind control so I can get these freaking toys made that I want, <laughs> that would be a good superpower. I'd be like, yep, now you need to listen to me. I don't have to hear everything else. That's that's probably why I pick. I know it's a creepy one for a lot of reasons, <laughs> but I, I promise everybody watching, I will just make all the cool toys I've been asked to make over the last 20 years with my mind control. Like so if that gets granted, thank you. <laughs> and can you tell us about any other upcoming projects that you're excited for? Well, some of the ones we unveiled at the at the panel were pretty cool. I mean, like the ones right behind you, the Frank Miller Batman, the Jim Lee Batman Black and White. Capullo. I'm super excited to announce the new Artist Alley figures at the at, uh, at, uh, toy show coming up in February. Fortunately, I can't tell you who they I'll are. I'll see your toy figures. I know. <laughs> so that's, that's going to be really exciting. And just a continuation of the Batman Black and White line. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, that we've gotten that high. I mean, you know, if I can get to 150 by the time I'm here, that'd be great. Right now, you're gonna get to that, 200. That, that's 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 a lot. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you never run out of artists for this line. Just when you think you're like, oh, who's left? And you're like, oh, and then something will show up, and you're like, oh, we should do that one because they're, they're always bringing in new artists and new styles. So, what's not to be excited about? It's a great job. Cool. Yeah, and doing stuff like this, super fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us, Fletcher Graphics, Gotham Geek Girl, and we'll see you. I should do that, right? <laughs> that would be really cool. Thank you for coming to Comic Con. Thanks for coming, Puddins! <laughs> you did it, ventriloquism. Super ventriloquism, that should have been your power.